Hello, people of Earth. It's Isaac Thick's Heart Cinema, Episode 5. Just got here with a quick intro, and once again, we talked for too damn long. So we're splitting up this ep into two smaller, more bite-sized eps. A little more digestible, I think. So here it is. Enjoy Part 1 of Isaac Thick's Heart Cinema, Episode 5. <laughs> We are live. Okay, episode five of uh, I Suck Dicks Heart Cinema. And for you returning fanboys of the show, we have a exciting guest tonight making his very first appearance. We did it. Since we started recording. We pulled it off. Friend of the show. Friend of the show and Chris- fan of the show. Christopher Lambert. Christopher Lambert. We did it. Welcome. Uh, Chris isn't here. Oh, it's not Chris Lambert, no. Just as exciting as Christopher Lambert, the one, the only, you know him, you love him, Daniel Fadak. Daniel, welcome. Uh, thanks for having me. You... I, I, I thought you were, I was expecting to be announced as a different name, oh. so... <laughs> no, we, we break kayfabe here, oh. except for me, because I hate my real last name, so I go with TNA fake last name. Okay, It's okay, we, we hate your real last name, too. Everybody does. <laughs> fair enough. Uh, and, and actually, uh, a bit of trivia I uh, figured I'd hit you up with since this is my first appearance on the show. I actually did play the character of Raiden in the 1995 <laughs> film Mortal Kombat. So I'm actually a, be- a bigger uh, grab than, than Christopher, uh, Christopher, Christopher Lambert. Yeah. But yes, uh, yes, I have listened to all the episodes that have been posted so far, uh, including the one that hasn't been posted as of the recording of this. <laughs> but, uh, but you've probably heard it by the time you're hearing me speak. Yeah, if yeah. you're listening to 5 Before 4, what are you doing with your life? You, you messed up, man. You're doing you it wrong. Up. Just listen to them in order. Like, wait for them to come out and listen to them. Don't go 1, 2, 3, 5. Yeah, Alex. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> we got to call them out personally. <laughs> every show we have in to call them out. First one, call them out. <laughs> Things we have to do every show. Call out Alex. Make the stupid Rango <laughs> joke <laughs> whenever the Beatle names come out. I was out. wondering if that was going to get mentioned today or not. <laughs> <laughs> and when you ask if I have any plugs, I say your mom. <laughs> oh, there's one more, but I'll, I'm going to save it for later. Okay, we'll save it. I'm going to surprise you. Good. Surprise me with a joke we've done four times. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so I guess we uh, we watched a movie this evening, did we not? We did. I, I, it came up an does, episode. Does that, does that qualify as a movie, what we watched this it's evening? It's a... I, I want to say movie in quotation marks. I'm doing every time you hear us say movie in reference to this movie, picture us doing air quotes. Just make sure you don't have a, a glass with water in it as you're doing air quotes because <laughs> you know what? I will just do air quotes every time. Yeah, movie did it. Yeah, so I think we talked about it on episode one, but the three of us. Yeah. Well, we talked about it because you and Kelly Entry. Me and Kelly. You and Kelly had already seen it. Yeah, me and Kelly had a double feature of this movie and Tiptoes, which we also (laughs) talked about. But the movie we're referring to is Birdemic, Shock and Terror, which only applies to the latter 45 minutes of this movie. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. Because there is not a bird to be found in the first half of this movie. But there is. No, yeah, there, there is. When, when well, they're, we're walking out of that fine. restaurant and there's those, like, parrot things. There were some oh, nice, yeah, they, there were some right, nice CGI parrots. And, Drew, the way you described the birds in this movie was fucking gorgeous. They looked like a free <laughs> screensaver. <laughs> yeah, like, if you went to Google and typed in bird wallpaper screen sca- screensaver, this is what would have came like, up. Not even a paid screensaver. You know, that, you know those ones in the 90s that had, like, the fish and then, like, the flying toasters? That's what it was like. I was about to say, tack on the 1995 onto the end of that. Uh, yeah, that screensaver. Yeah, yeah. This is not it was now. Not, no, although the movie was made in 2008. There were yeah, there were no indications of that. Uh, no. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. I, I, I think the way I look at it is, you know, when like CNN has like cell phone footage from somebody from, like, the Middle East capturing some kind of rampages or that's how military action. <laughs> that's what it looks like. This is, yeah, <laughs> the I, quality I, of that movie was like somebody from Lebanon on a cell phone. Yeah, Anderson Cooper shot this movie in Tikrit. <laughs> <laughs> I like the shout-out to Tikrit. No problem. Happy to do it. 
Yeah, it was. Um, I don't know. It was. It was. It was a thing. The lead actor was a robot. Can we agree? He was <laughs> yes. definitely a robot. He was devoid of emotion. Yes. For sure. For the, sure. The girl eh, tried her best, but didn't have a ton to work with. At least she wasn't hideous. That makes it. She was attractive. She was pretty looking yeah, actually. She, she was good. Now, we didn't get to see her in a bathing suit. We only got to see her in her underwear. Yes. We did get to see, I guess, technically the second female lead? Or I guess, maybe, was I guess the, third. Was there only three females in the entire no, movie? There was, no, there was the, the mom. The girl. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, we got to the see one girl. The mom was the best performer in the entire film. Yeah, basically just because she, she was sort of a nice old lady. She was, she was a regular human being just telling a story. She wasn't acting like she was telling a story. She was just yeah. being a genuine old lady. There was also the uh, the corporate takeover guy, oh, yeah. the guy who's buying Get out. Three, four lines, but, but he delivered them, he very delivered them like an actor yes. who had acted before, which I think is something that can't be said of a lot of people in this movie. I legitimately, would say ninety-five percent of the people. I think, I think they were like just the, the two leads. Friends. Yeah, like the two leads had not acted before. No, so just yeah, found it mean, moderately attractive guy, attractive girl. And just like, okay, well, here you go. We got you, you, we got Screensaver, we got a movie. Screensaver. <laughs> <laughs> to, to go with Screensaver, I will say I absolutely loved the ridiculous shooting of birds out of the sky. And they were that, bad they, shots. that they used, like, eight times. Oh, re- repetitive. Yeah. Very repetitive. <laughs> At, but one time, which is great, they used the same shot that they had used for all of the one bird being shot. But then they added a second bird in the corner, yes, also being, no, shot. being shot, and I got very excited. So I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> that's where the budget went." And but, just, but budget of ten thousand dollars, which that even 10K. that that even seems like mu- like that, too much. That was the director's life savings. <laughs> yeah, I feel like like with no exaggeration, exagger or exaggeration, us with no filmmaking experience and less than ten thousand dollars could make a better movie. Yeah, I th- uh, first, yeah, I, yeah, for yeah. sure. Some of some of our promos we could, were better. Than yeah, that. we couldn't make a good movie. No, but we could make something that more resembles a movie than that. I'm pretty sure. Uh, uh, yeah, a, dra- a drama that's actually dramatic and not. Uh, you know, the only reaction that really drew from us was you know laughing at this. <laughs> we lost our shit at a couple. There was there was oh, one boy. line in particular. <laughs> the, okay, the, the, oh. before we give you the line, the. The, there the, is a the premise, sort yeah. of the underlying. There's a less than subtle yes. <laughs> environmental message in this. Like they can by the end, they're like it's just the director screaming <laughs> global warming at you. <laughs> what is that? His hybrid Mustang. And yeah, he did mention his plug. The lead actor mentioned his plug-in hybrid Mustang in 2008. Which didn't exist in 2008, and to my knowledge, does not exist in 2012. <laughs> But anyway, Dan, go ahead with the. Uh, uh, so so yeah so the so the entire kind of uh, the motivation behind everything why the, uh, just to sort of catch you up to speed uh, the first forty five minutes of the movie nothing nothing but this relationship going on just ploddingly going on like uh, these two <laughs> awful dull people with no chemistry whatsoever which with the relationship formed by him stalking her basically he he <laughs> sees her in a restaurant and then decides I, I think I know this girl I maybe went to high school with her. Like approaches her in a very just uncomfortable manner, and uh, sort of uh, they exchange numbers. Uh, he asks her out on a date after he makes a sale for a million dollars after having <laughs> knocked the price down fifty percent. Yeah, and I think the way the negotiation went, like they negotiated back and forth, and they find and they arrived at something that the client was happy with. Yes, and then he said he the salesman said, "Okay, I'll give you that and take another fifty percent off." Gets off the phone, high fives his coworker, and says, "I just made a sale for a million dollars." So, what kind of profit margins were in that original sale of two million dollars? Huge, like this unbelievable. Un- un- like we're talking. I want like, to sell what they're selling. Like a hundred and twenty percent gross margin. Like sure. uh, uh, just crazy, <laughs> crazy yeah. numbers. Anyways, Insane. So best we could figure was cocaine. <laughs> yes. So they go on a date. He he wants to celebrate the fact that he made this awesome sale, and she wants to celebrate the fact. That she landed the cover of the Victoria's Secrets uh, lingerie catalog after a photo shoot in a one-hour photo in a strip mall. Yes. Um, so they go on this date, and then so the first forty-five minutes is is uh, their relationship kind of blooming, and you're you're getting bits and pieces of the environmentalism thing. A guy randomly shows up and sells him a twenty thousand dollars solar panel. Yeah. Which I guess leads to him getting the idea to sell cheaper, more sustainable solar panels. Yes. Um, which, by the way, 
So he makes this million dollar sale. This guy's sale. life in one week. Oh, yeah. This, this happens in the span of maybe ten days. He makes this million dollar sale. The company he works for gets bought out. He, uh, I How guess, much does it get bought out for? Uh, one billion dollars? That's correct. Okay. One billion! Then, so he sells his stock options using the money he makes that he decides he's going to uh, retire prematurely. Well, not prematurely, but early. Early retire. Early yeah. retirement. <laughs> In the process, <laughs> I guess retired. while he's retired, he starts up a new company of these solar panels. Which kind of defeats the purpose of early retirement. No, I don't say. even think he, say, he, he says early retirement for a couple months. Yeah, so I think he... But it lasts a couple days. But he's, not, he's, he's, he's confusing I, retirement with vacation. Vacation. <laughs> I think that's exactly what happened. Okay, so early retirement. Um, while he's on early retirement, gets the idea oh, I can do cheaper solar panels, more sustainable. So he starts up a no- his own company, and they get investors to give him ten million dollars. Yeah. Ten million. Because he figured out a way to undercut all current <laughs> solar panels on the market by like. 400%. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe more than that, actually. Cause he, what was it? Was it 10 he, cents versus $4? Something like that. Per what? Of I think that's right. It was, yeah, it was so ridiculous. He was selling absurd. his for like $400, $500, and he bought one for 20000 So yeah. it was crazy. This all happens in 10 days. Yeah. And, like, and he has time to meet this girl. He lived a life. <laughs> <laughs> he lived a life in 10 days. 30 years of business in 10 days. Yeah. That's the first 45 minutes. Is them having just like well, these incredibly long scenes of well, them going on Well, that's what I was going to say. Because like a, dancing. Lot of, a large part of the 45 minutes was the Art and Pumpkin Festival. Yes. Which was five minutes when clearly there happened to be an Art and Pumpkin Festival in town. And they're like, let's go get some B-roll yes. footage. And then, here we go. So then they go to a, uh, like an Irish bar and then dance. Dance while this kind of R and B singer sings for them they're and the, only the, them. They're the only people there. Yes. He is the only other person there yes. singing to them, lip syncing to them. And how long is the duration of that scene? <laughs> the, the whole song, the entire song, like a three and a half minute song, uh, just uncomfortably flashing back and forth between shots of the singer lip syncing to his own song. Which was hanging out with my family. Yes, hanging out with my family. Great lyrics. Look it up. What was the Damien? Damien Carter. Carter. That's right. Damien Carter. Look him up on the uh, the somewhere s- SoundCloud. Is that a thing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, and I think you invented something, but <laughs> okay. That's fine. And, and then them uh, dancing and like and by the end it like sort of seems like. They're just sort of taking the piss out of it, and they yeah. were just kind of screwing around, trying to crack each other, why not? And yet it out. made Final Cut. No, they just threw it all in there. <laughs> Whatever footage they have of them dancing, that's in the movie. Yeah. So, anyways, finally, um, uh, much to the... We didn't even get to the great line. We totally... Oh, my God. Lost over it. This is the first half of the movie. So, they go on a double date with his, uh, his best friend and her best friend happen to be dating. Also dating. Which and they never found that out ever. No. Like, n- like in- through hanging out, like, not no. like, oh, I'll bring my best friend, and oh, I'll bring my best friend. It's like, no, now we're dating, and like, oh, guess what? My girlfriend is your girlfriend's best friend. To be fair, to I- I'm pretty sure this double date was their second date ever. Like, yeah. It seems like after the first date, I really like this guy, let's go on a double date. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of <laughs> weird, but anyways. So they go to see a movie... And uh, they get out of the movie, and this is the line that... The friend, the friend who had, like, the main guy... Is, oh, my God. Just got a huge spit take over here, by the way. I wish we had... You know, like, for ten seconds... Physical comedy on an yeah. on a podcast. For ten seconds a show, I wish we had video. For the rest, I don't. But for that ten I seconds, it. It was I so out. regret not having video. So the friend is a skeptic. The, yeah. when, when they sell their... The main guy's pretty green. Yeah, he's very, very green. He's pushing this whole green... Uh, the friend is like, eh, I'm too busy to be green. I have to fuck. <laughs> and I'm gonna fuck, and I'm gonna buy a really like fancy car. Yeah, get a Ferrari. Yeah, he's gonna get a Ferrari, just like waste gas. Who cares, right? So they they go to see a movie, and they get out of the movie. They're in the parking lot, and uh, when the main uh, protagonist, the first thing he says when they get out of the theater is, <laughs> <laughs> "Oh, you're waiting for one of us." <laughs> that was a really good movie. An inconvenient truth. <laughs> <laughs> At which point we just see ourselves oh, simultaneously we, burst out into laughter. We missed the entire scene. We have to we rewind. had to rewind the entire like two minute scene because we were laughing. We were laughing to the point of pain because it, it was amazing. So the friend says like, "Yeah, I'm with you now. Let me, I'm going to go get a hybrid Mustang as well." But before that, I got to go have what was it? Sexy? I got to go do some work. And, and he's like, what? Like, we just finished a double date. What do you have to go do work on? Sensual work. <laughs> Which, what? <laughs> <laughs> Rewind. The first time we see that the, the two <laughs> best friends of the, the two main characters are, are a couple, they're in bed together in their bathing suits, 
She's on top of him, feeling his chest hair. Yeah. Uh, I guess... Uh, of which there was much. Yeah, there was a lot of chest I was just like hair. saying, not as much chest hair as me, nor Mr. Kelly Summers. Yes. Yeah. Friend, that guy friend, would only come third at this podcast right now. Friend of the show, Kelly Summers, who's not here tonight. Um, anyways. So, so, yeah. First half of the movie is all this dating. Yeah. They finally hook up in their... Uh, she's wearing her underpants. He's wearing a tank top and, and pants. And slacks. Yeah. And Which never come off. No, they don't come off because we see them uh, making out, making out, and presumably things are going to get a little hot, hotter, and heavier. And then uh, you see uh, there's a cut, and then it's the morning, and you sort of see everything is kind of serene and placid and whatever. And then uh, they come come back, and they're wearing the same thing. No, yes. Nothing, and nothing. The hair is not messed up. Yeah. So I don't know how they, they've seen. It was they had a very tame night. They found a way to be more efficient in in their love making than maybe than they have. It, it was a seventh grade dry humping. <laughs> That's what it was. was. At this point, this is where we finally get some birds. Shit in, has burned bird, down in this overnight. Bird demic. Yeah. And the next literally, time, literally halfway into the movie. Yes, the movie I believe was exactly uh, Just one hour thirty three. Yeah. And it was like forty five right on the dot. Forty five on the dot. And for the next 48 minutes... Bonkers. It was nothing <laughs> but just awful bird screeching. sound effects. Oh, God. Screeching. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. And guns being shot. And people just uh, being chased around by birds and, and chasing after birds. And just a series of driving, hey, that person looks hurt or dead or scared and lying under a car. Uh, or, you know, going to gas stations to get food. And then deciding to have a picnic... Out in the open, even though they've been attacked by birds about four times at this point. Yeah, birds are outside. Let's eat outside. They never seem to really get the. This is what may be, you know, an issue. Staying out in, you know, in the outside where all these birds are attacking them. They just keep making the same mistakes, repeating their mistakes. It's it's honestly baffling. Um, what else is there to say about the second half of the movie? I mean, honestly, it's just. I, the only thing that keeps coming to my head is just how terrible the green screen was. There's, there's like, a there lot is of bad, bad green bad, screen, bad and then there's the this screen. movie. Yes. And, like, it's, like, blurry too close to the background green screen. Yes. Like, the backgrounds were, like, right there. Like, right behind them. And, yeah, that's... I don't think there needs to be too much else said about so, this movie. So, eventually, uh, the only people who are remaining are the, the, the protagonist, his love interest, and two children that they've rescued. One who's in the trunk of a car, other who is underneath a car. Neither of the children are very good actors, either. I mean, there's no good actors in this movie, besides Business Joe and, and the mother. And old lady mom. Um, but anyways, so at the end... Um, the birds are attacking them in their van. <laughs> One kind of crash lands right in the windshield, and then the rest of them just fly away. Yeah, that's it, right? It just did I miss? Did I miss anything? No. Okay. The, <laughs> and the ending. So then the the couple and the kids they sort of walk down onto the beach where they they just been chased off of the beach by birds into their van. The birds fly away. They go back down to the beach and they watch as the same. CGI birds are just static. Like they're they're moving their they're flapping their wings, but it's the same animation. They're not getting further away. Yeah, they're not they're not getting further from them, and they don't get smaller. They just stay stationary on the screen. And I would say it's for like a solid four minutes. Yeah, and, and you may and you may say four minutes. So that's not very long, but it's a long time. Yeah, like they're watching them not move for four minutes. And I, like the first two and a half of that uh, is. Is just just them with music, and then you get the credits with them just watching these birds. Uh, but uh, why did the birds leave? I I'm really not sure. Just, uh, to, no, I'm sure they'll explain it in the sequel that they are making that is going to be in 3D. Is that that's a thing? Legitimately being made 3D. It's released in September, I believe. And it's actually going to be released in theaters. I don't know if it's being released in theaters. I know it has a higher budget than the first one. Oh, well, if it's going to be made in 3D, I'm assuming but, it's going to be a higher budget but than yeah, it, it, it's Check it out. Look on IMDb. It's there. Speaking of which, Drew, do you want do you want to go make a movie for $10,000 tomorrow? Because I think I feel... I would love to. Like we stated previously that, you know, if, uh, yeah, honestly, I do not know how this 
person, how anyone could not make a worse movie than this Oh, person. man, we totally missed kamikaze exploding birds <laughs> and acid spinning birds. Well, that's the thing. As, or acid pooping birds. As the movie went along, the birds got more and more power, so at first you see these birds crashing into, like, gas stations. And, like, buildings and stuff. And, and like, explosions going off when these birds are hitting them. Um, and then later on, in a scene that wipes out uh, five characters, four or five characters, mm-hmm. um, they they spit poop or acid or bile or some. It was just like, or I'm pretty sure Mountain Dew voltage. Mountain Dew. Not, it was like <laughs> just off-putting orange liquid. Easily the worst Mountain Dew ever invented, for the record. Um, which blinds and kind of burns them. And at that point, they kind of these birds. They like. They attack the eyes and throat. I'm not really sure. They're really efficient birds. <laughs> they manage to like take people out with like one kind of they, fail swoop. They know? practice their kill shots. Oh no, they're they're they are highly trained. They're, they're the suburban commandos. <laughs> I meant to say Universal Soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> the Universal Soldiers of birds. They're not the Terry Balea of birds. They don't. Oh, anyway, yeah, no problem. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no problem. It's probably not the first. It is the first. It won't be the last. So, um, we've we've discussed birdemic. Yes. Shock and terror. Yes. Uh, we perhaps we can move on. Both you and I, uh, within the last week, because it's only been out for a week. I'm yeah. assuming. I don't like to put it at the moment. Uh, Scott is not sitting here. He's talking on his phone in the kitchen. Well, I'm taking this opportunity to discuss. Oh, he's back. He's back. The Dark Knight Rises because Scott is the only person here who has not seen the movie. But he doesn't really. But I don't care that much. Well, so uh, then that, that works. So, yeah. Drew, what did you think? Well, of the without movie? spoilers, because I'm sure that this might come out before people see it. It might be two weeks, probably. I don't know. We're what is it? It's July 27th now. It came out the 20th. Um, it's been a week. We've got. We haven't put out as of right, as of the twenty seventh. We haven't put up the part one or two of episode four. So I don't know. By the time this goes up, uh, if you if you were gonna see, it, you're gonna, you've seen I guess. It. I guess. I don't. Need to, I don't necessarily need to spoil anything. No, not really. Um, okay. So what? so my thoughts on it were, as I said on my movie reviews, that the Dark Knight was better than the Dark Knight Rises. That, yeah, that and, seems to be popular. And my, my thoughts on it are because <clears throat> in the world of Batman, and I guess most of DC. Uh, although I'm not really like, a big fan of most of the DC, like I don't really like Superman. I think Superman's. I think he's boring. He's boring. I think he does. Uh, see, the, the thing to make a really good heel, or sorry, really good babyface, is you need a uh, cast of good heels. Yeah. Like as far as I'm concerned, like h- how can I be interested in you if I, you know, I'm not interested in you know what you're protecting and yeah. who you're fighting off, yeah. kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and like who's Superman's heel? Lex, Lex Luthor. Luthor. Who else who's, is there? Who's just a dude? Who else? Zod. Uh, no one. No, he's just some weirdo. <laughs> no, Richard ball. Pryor. I don't know who that is. Oh yeah, I know Richard Pryor. I know. I know you're like racking your brain to try to picture an alien named Richard Pryor. <laughs> it's General Zod, isn't he? A here's dude? the thing. Here's the thing. I thought you said Merchant Pryor, and uh, like, I'm not familiar with the. With this um, like the Superman with villain, Merchant of Venice or uh, or Metropolis. Yeah. Um, regardless, uh, Batman's got a, a real great cast of yeah, yeah but, of foils. But my thoughts are like the, the biggest one is the Joker. Yes, the Joker's always been the big Batman villain. Joker's number one. And the yes. thing is, you, you you did the second movie with him. It's hard to go. And, to and go then go you up didn't from you there. didn't kill him off because you thought you were going to do more with him. And then he fled. Then, then he killed himself. Then he killed himself. <laughs> And then, so then, like, the thing, yeah, my, thoughts, <laughs> my thoughts were is that then you have to try and make somebody else... That's on par. Or just yeah, a or, little... or become almost as, as intense and as, like, overpowering and, and evil, maniacal as the Joker. And I think most people don't see Bane that way. Well, the thing is, like, I've, Bane... I've never, I've never seen him as a primary... No, Bane has, always, Bane has always been, like, he's got, like, the super soldier stuff mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. just... Makes him a giant mutant freak who's super strong, yeah. but he's never been like smart or like like uh, maniacal or yeah. cunning, talkative, talkative. Yeah. He's just been like a monster, and usually he's like a henchman, right? Yeah, he's, just he's just some, one of the other villains uses him as their their like yeah. dummy to go as, beat as up as, as a means to an end. Yeah. But like, like most of my Batman experience is the '90s Batman the Animated Series, and he yeah. was always someone's henchman. Yeah, like Joker would use him yeah. to go fuck up Batman, and like in the comic books, I didn't read the comic books, but I knew this. Or is that Bane breaks back Batman's back, right? Now that was that was, that. and this is a spoiler. That was true to form, though. No, it, no, yeah, I know. Straight to the the method yeah. and everything. Yeah. 
some inverted gorilla press to back break yeah. room. But no, but yeah, I'm like, I'm saying, up, boom, yeah. up, up and down. Oh, yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. But like, I was, I was, I'm, I'm he saying, says he did do it, do it in the movie? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah. Awesome. I did not, that was awesome. But like, uh, so I'm saying, like, obviously in the, in the comic book world or the Batman world, like, he is capable of doing that. Yeah. But in the movie, they try and make him, like, over, like, Super intelligent and oh, super maniacal. The, the opening scene and, sets him up as like the the amount of like kind of plotting and like every little thing has to go right for this whole is scenario. He, in the movies, is he smarter than the Joker? Uh, or, I don't know. Like they try, the same, they try or? and make him be like really, uh, really. I think intelligent. I guess like they try and make him have like a really high IQ. Like he's really smart. Uh-huh. Whereas Joker was just a crazy asshole who was smart. Yeah. But he was just but like he was, just he was out to hurt people yeah. and kill people and like. You know, like d- just cause destruction. Uh, Bane, Bane, Bane had all he had all his bases covered as yeah. far as like, like uh, you know, in the opening scene they like hijack a plane and manage to like make it seem like it's an accident. Yeah. But like g- kidnap a guy who's going to help him when it comes to later on. Where you know he's getting you know pieces of the puzzle that he's going to have to fill in later on in the movie. Like he's thinking three steps ahead. Yeah. He's he's definitely not just yeah. some muscle bound henchman in this movie. Yeah. However, he is a total mush mouth, and I found that to be very oh, awkward. Yeah, it, it was very hard to understand him, especially too because he's wearing a thing well, the thing is covering like, his mouth. The thing is, Tom, Tom Hardy is a British actor, yeah. but I feel like he was really hamming up his British accent, which made it really hard to understand him. Right, like if he was trying to speak and like enunciate, like maybe more like like toning down the accent to sound a little bit more, I guess I'll use the term American. Um, it, it would have been easier for us to understand, but because he was like hamming up his, America, 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 America. we've had that chant before. We've had that before. I was just going show. for a silent one. No, <laughs> oh, okay. um, anyways, but so like, yeah, I feel because he was hamming up the accent, it made it harder to understand him. And there was a few times where you're like, "What did you say?" And then something would happen. You're like, "Oh, that's what he just said." Right? Like, I, I did did find him a little hard to understand. Can I also guess though that he, as far as people hamming up their voices, he wasn't the worst culprit. You know in the what? Movie? Christian Bale was not as <laughs> was not as he was as the second one. Dark Knight, he was really, really because like angry I, and I, I like Christian Bale, but as a result of the stupid fucking voice, he ended up being like the fourth best actor in the Dark Knight. Yeah. Well, and, and the thing too is like he set the bar for for those kind of movies that now everybody fucking does it. Adrian yeah. Brody did it in Predator. Um, I just watched another movie recently that somebody fucking did it. Uh, it'll come to me eventually, but yeah, like that's what guys do. Paul Blart. It was Paul Blart. <laughs> I want to yeah. say there was maybe two instances. Two where he got really, where he got really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it wasn't like the second one where he's like, "Where's Rachel?" <laughs> and then, well, which we constantly yell all the time now, or I always yell, and or like the where. Like, where is she? I don't know, man. I swear to God. Swear to me. <laughs> like, he's just, like, angry and, like, over intense. Where like, my, my, my girlfriend has yelled at me in that voice for the record. <laughs> Good. It's kind of awkward. I'm glad they lost not ask him what context. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, like, he's not, he's not as, as, like, intense as he was Good. in the second one. But he's just fucking like, relaxed in the I, like, I, I, I don't want to spoil it, but, like, it, it's not... It's not, like, in the second movie where it's constantly... He's constantly trying to stop, like, Bane from doing things, and he's constantly trying to find somebody or find something. Uh-huh. Like, there, there is a whole block of the movie where he doesn't have to be... Like, there's, other, there's other people who are doing that. It's yeah, he, like, he like, doesn't have to do it. He, he's, he's sort of like an outsider watching things. Like, he doesn't have to be involved in every single plot. Because I mean, you have, like, uh, Commissioner Gordon... And you have uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt, who, who is who's Gordon. awesome. Joseph Gordon Levitt in this movie very, very is good. Awesome. Commissioner Gordon of Tiptoes fame. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's of Tiptoes fame for sure, for sure. But yeah, no, like, did he do this role on his knees as well? Uh, yeah. Only oh. half, only okay. half. Not so much, no. Uh, but yeah, no, like, and then like, I, I personally don't like Anne Hathaway that much. I thought, I thought, I thought she, she was, was a great Catwoman. There was a lot of people who I, I know who, when she was first announced as being that character, were like, people oh, like, seriously, oh, roll really? kind of thing. Yeah. Right? I thought she did a really good job. Yeah, I thought honestly. she was great. I thought she was perfect. She, she was a good mix of that. Would kind you of say thing. she was perfect <laughs> for <laughs> Kelly's not here, so someone had to. I know. She was no. Uh, but she was like sassy and like. Or she was no Eartha Kitt. I swear. Oh, oh mm-hmm. I had a bet with myself in the two second gap there that you were gonna say Eartha Kitt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, but like like. Definitely, like she was, she had all of the right characteristics to be Catwoman, which was which was great. Um, but yeah, it was it was. Was she a babe? 
You know, I don't, I don't overly find her attractive, but I didn't think she was... I don't think she's ugly. I think she's attractive. She's a little... I think she's a little, like, kind of... Um, she's very lean. She's, yeah. She's yeah, very, yeah, very yeah, skinny, yeah, and, and is. that's very apparent in this movie, too. Yeah. But, but no, she, yeah, she's, she was attractive. She's not, she's not really... As far as the catness of the character... Yeah, it's not... It's not like some... It's know, not like Michelle Pfeiffer. Or... or <laughs> um, um, Halle Berry. Halle Berry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's very much just like a very kind of sleek black thing. It's a very, yeah, it's a very mask. subtle. It's a very subtle. And it's ears. I'm, I'm also gesturing the yeah. entire time <laughs> but it's, it's, as I'm describing the costume. It's, it's not like in the other movies where it's like she, she dies and is brought back to life by cats licking her face. <laughs> it's just that she is a cat burglar. Which yeah. is just an, it, inter- it, an interesting origin story. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, But it has, like, it has absolutely nothing to do with cats other have, than the fact she's a cat burglar. Have, yes. do- have doctors ever tried to bring someone back from, like, who's on life support by having a bunch they of cats? They should try. I don't know why they've never <laughs> gone I guess because they might become a villain. Bring out the kitty support. <laughs> yeah, kitty support. <laughs> exactly. Cardboard box. They open <laughs> up <laughs> over top of you and dump them on you. This isn't looking good. Bring out the kitties. <laughs> exactly. So, um, I mean, as it's been said to the other people in this uh, space... No. <laughs> you wanted to say a room, but we're outside. On so my sun deck. Yes. Um, definitely not my type of movie. In fact, uh, people here will be the first to tell you they were kind of surprised to see that I had seen it already. Um, uh, and as as people have put put it, my, my types of movies typically involve people <laughs> staring at one another for uh, large chunks of, nine, of the 90 minutes. But with that being said, uh, I... And I really then when they talk, there are subtitles. Have you, have you yeah. seen The Squid and the Whale? No, I, I, I've been meaning to, though. I, 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 I can't I, believe you haven't seen this movie. Uh, well. That's Jeff, Jeff Daniels, right? Uh, I think so. Jeff Foxworthy. It's no. not <laughs> Jeff Foxworthy. <laughs> Jeff Foxworthy. Um, yeah. Um, but no, I, I enjoyed it. And the fa- even the fact that it was, you know, it was like two hours and 45 minutes, and yeah. I saw it at 11 o'clock at night, and I managed to, you know, stick with it. Yeah. I thought it was I thought it was good. Um, it was long, but there wasn't a lot of dead space. Even and even there was not dead, everything happening like constantly. And sort of alluding back to the fact that he said like Batman's not really the forefront of the whole thing yeah. at times. Yeah. And that sort of led to the being less of this voice. Um, <laughs> there are moments where it's um, there's not a ton of action going on. It's just kind of brooding, and it's very yeah. it's very dark. And yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Kind of. But that's because for Nolan's kind of all a boot. But it builds it all up, and then Batman just makes the mother of all hot comebacks. Oh, and, yeah, for sure, and, for sure. And just shit gets real. So Hot tag of the century. Definitely mm-hmm. would recommend it. And uh, Highlight highlight of the night goes to Thomas Lennon <laughs> as the doctor. <laughs> that was, like, honestly, I was... I was Dangle from Reno 911. I saw it by myself, because I see movies by myself in the afternoon all the time. It was me by myself on one side of the theater, and then, like, the middle was packed, and the other side had some people, and as soon as he came on, I literally gave a, yeah! And I was like, oh, shit, I'm not, like, I'm not I'm alone not in the theater. Anyone. But nobody else looked at me, so it was cool. Like, I was totally fine, but I was so pumped that Tom Lennon was in this movie. Now, moving on from we from the current events subject, but this is a good segue, I just figured it's an interesting topic for a movie podcast. Uh... The most empty theater you have been in when seeing a movie, because two automatically pop into my mind. Well, Actually, I got three in my mind. I saw Chernobyl Diaries. Okay. At noon. Yes. And I was the only person in the theater. That movie nice. just recently came out. Ah, uh, like right? like three months three, ago. And why did, you see, why did you see it? Because Tristan told me it was a good movie, and then I saw it and wanted to shit my pants during the theater. Okay. Just I wanted to poo in the theater just so I could leave and be like, "That's what I left for that movie." Was my poo. Okay. It was terrible. Uh, I also saw. I don't know, man. I see a lot of movies by myself, like day off, go to nooner, and they're pretty empty. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, lots of time. Like okay. I'll see a nooner and it's empty, and sometimes I'll see like a three thirty, and, and there'll be like five people. And you have you ever been the only person? Yeah, Chernobyl Diaries. I was the oh, only, only one in the theater. Oh, only one in the theater. Okay. But there's been several times where I've seen a movie like maybe like towards the end of its run yeah. or like opening day when I have the day off. Yeah. And I'll see like an early show, and there's like never anybody there. Same question. Um. I've never, I don't know if I've seen, I've seen one movie by myself, and I wasn't the only person there. That was Anger Management, yes, because I needed to kill time at the mall. Um, but I'm sure I've been to ones where I've been in the only pair or group there, but nothing's really springing to mind. Of, and you sound like you had some. I've got three up. movies that immediately spring to mind. Oh, <laughs> this first one's really sad, because it was opening night, Friday night at like 7.30 showing. <laughs> there should be people there. There should be people yeah. there. There was me and two friends, and until like a minute before the movie started, 
no one else, <laughs> right as the movie started, two, a couple came in to see the opening night screening of Detroit Rock City. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, uh, then there was uh, See No Evil, which I saw <laughs> oh, on, yeah. on a Sunday afternoon. It was with uh, friends of the show, Bill Berry and Josh Lamb, <laughs> and one other guy whose viewing experience was ruined by the three of us yelling out, <laughs> It's Tony <laughs> <Dominic Kane!" laughs> At really inopportune is, moments. Is it sad that we saw that movie as a group of, like, ten? Like, we, uh, me and my friends all got together and there saw that movie be, as a group of ten. There shouldn't be ten people who know each other <laughs> that all want to see see no Oh, no, we were, we were stoked for that movie for some reason. And then, the, on a similar uh, note, the only movie that I have seen by myself in the theater, which was because I, uh, again, it was an after uh, Wednesday afternoon, and uh, I had to get out of my house, and I had nothing else to do, um, and I didn't work at the time, uh, was Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Very good movie, for the record. Great movie. Yeah, but your movie you saw by yourself is better than the movie I saw by myself. And there, and there was maybe two other people in the theater, so... Um, so yeah, there there was definitely a movie I saw where it was me and a couple. I was all the way at the back row. They were all the way at the front row, and they left like half an hour into the movie because it was that bad. And I figured like, well, I already paid for it, and I'm alone, so I might as well just stay. Don't remember what movie it was. Though. I was say, so I might as well jack off. <laughs> no, but I, I thought which I which is not a terrible. I idea. did think. I could totally do that right now, and no one would ever know. But I, I'm not <laughs> except for the guy who's cleaning. I'm house. not. I'm not Paul Rubin. Paul so, Rizet. or more recently, uh, Fred Willard. Really? Oh yeah, I yes. saw that. This, but, oh, here's the thing. You, okay, was it a porn movie well, though? Yes. No. <laughs> it was at a porn theater. Yes. So like. It's kind of entrapment. I'm pretty sure that, like, how, like, like, I cannot imagine a bunch of people going in that theater and only one dude jerking off. No, there was only one famous dude jerking yeah. off, and so, you know, and he got... Regular all, he Joe can go in one. there and crank but, one like, out. But, as I, I watched, it was, uh, I, it was probably Daily, Daily Show or Colbert, and, like, they made a good point, like, either close down the theater, because it's illegal, or let him be. <laughs> Like, and also, as far as I'm concerned, Fred Willard can masturbate wherever he wants to. He's a good man. <laughs> he's a good man. And Fair enough. Is he, he's Canadian? I don't think or he's so. Just, he's just butt buddies with all those Canadians. Yeah. Like, well, Eugene Lanny well, and, and, and Captain Ritter. The second but, city people. But the yeah. connection, and they, they all went to Chicago. And the connection nowadays is certainly through Christmas, Christmas guests. guests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Anyways, so, we, should, we should probably move well, on. I was gonna say, does anybody patriot for games? I do reindeer for games, <laughs> but because uh, he usually says hunger for games. I saw that movie. It was good. You're, you're I want, I'm gonna start. Your your life. <laughs> I didn't, don't it was. Know, it's not even. Uh, it was, you're not the Dan I know. It was anymore. made. It was a movie that was made. The Dan I know would never see it. Yeah, I agree. Games. <laughs> Moving on. What has happened? Um, but yeah, just before games, I had to step out oh, during, yeah. the, during the transition from uh, Birdemic to Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises. Rises. But did we touch on the fact that every single scene, there's a point where you're watching, and if you've ever seen a movie before, you're like, here's where the scene should end. And then the scene goes on with nothing happening for another ten seconds. Did we touch on yes, that? Yes, we did. A bit, okay, yeah. Because, yeah. like, normally you don't... When you're watching a movie, even a bad movie, like Bucky Larson or uh, Paul Blart, like you, like, you don't like the content of it. But there's never points where you're saying, that audio mixing is fucked up, or that cut was bad. This had those. Oh, so this, this had like this, another this, level. This had nothing but those. Yeah, <laughs> like another level of bad filmmaking. Not just the content sucked, like the production sucked. Absolutely. And I guess, well, I guess like any Hollywood movie, really, the production doesn't suck. Yes. Like some are better than others, but you're never like actively. It's so easy to see, unless you're like a total film nerd. You're like, oh, the lighting there wasn't that great or something. But this one, anyone who has ever seen a movie and has any kind of point of reference can see, oh, this, he did it wrong. True. <laughs> he did all of it wrong. Anyway, yes, I do hunger for games, true. So we can Patriot Games now? We can Reindeer Games. Okay, so we've decided that because <clears throat> sometimes build the title is not so good, there's a lot of dead space, and Kelly and Justin both are terrible at that game. Uh, that we are going to try something slightly different tonight. 
Uh, and now for something completely different. Mm. Uh, we're going to try... We haven't come up with a title for this game, so we're just going to rip it off like we do everything else. Sure. Uh, we're just going to call it ABCD's Nuts. It's a pretty good name. Which is a good name, but we should have come up with something on our own. I'm sure we can think of something later. The solution we is to take their balls we, out. we came up with I Suck Sticks. I'm sure we can think of something else. Yeah. Um, we it, came up with I Suck Sticks and what I Suck Sticks stood for. That's true. Not at the same time. And <laughs> Champion of Men Fighting Grappling. Yeah. Which Which credit goes to Pistol Peter Thalate for what that actually stood for, though. Yeah, man. Crazy. I know. <laughs> P- perhaps his greatest contribution to society. I am including his child. <laughs> <laughs> I shake my head. <laughs> Anyways, the premise behind the game is you start at A, and you have to name a movie that begins with A, and next person is B, C, and so on and so, so forth. forth. If, you, um, if you don't think of one, you're out. Yeah, if you don't think of one, you're out. Uh, the movies that begin with the are under are T. Are only under T. So the letter T, super fucking easy. Everything else, a little harder. Little Same with uh, at. A or A, a only yeah. under A. Only under so A. So our articles are their own So letters. if it's uh, a dangerous method, is a, a, not B. Correct. Correct. And Correct. if we get too deep into this and it's too easy, then there are many variations we can do there, to yeah. toughen it up. Once, yeah, we'll if, get there if we get there. Yeah, if we run through the full alphabet, if we get to Z or Z for our American listeners, Z. <laughs> uh, then we'll do a twist if we have to Yeah, to make it harder. And, yep. and, and we decided that whoever wins this round will be hosting the first round of Leonard Malt and then we'll play other games before yep. that to determine who goes first in that game. Sounds good to me. So I think we'll let Dan start because he's the newest member of the sure. podcast world. So Dan, you can start at A. We'll go mm-hmm. to Scott than me. Sure. I've always felt like uh, Z had more of a nice rhythm to it than Z. Z- it does. It does. Yeah. Z sounds stupid. Because everything... Even as a child, I, I was always thinking more about the, the kind of... Well, because like the rhyming scheme of the alphabet song, yeah. like everything it, like rhymes with E. Yeah. And then, you know... Uh, uh, QRS, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Like, yeah. it's it's shitty. I'll, I'll be the first to say, I don't mind putting an extra U in our words. I'm okay I, with I, that. I think that looks nice in, in British. In, in it's, in it's pretty. Yeah. Um, but Z, yeah, it's just... Uh, I'm not with you, Z. It's not, a, it's not pleasing to the ear. With all that being said, <laughs> Army of Darkness. Being John Malkovich. Castaway. Ooh, I was going to say one, but it, but it, has, a the. it has a the in it. Yeah. So we we're going to say Dark City. Uh, e, everything must go. Fargo. Uh, Goodfellas. Hope Floats. I Am Legend. Jackass. <laughs> <laughs> Killers. Leaving Las Vegas. Ooh, uh, my neighbor Totoro. Oh, very good. Uh, no way out. Out of sight. Platoon. What are we on? Q. Quiz show. Rat race. Uh, singles. Oh, uh, T. What to do? <laughs> the Godfather Part Three. Uh, undercover brother. Well done. Uh, do, 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 do. so I'm on V. Uh, we were gonna look... Oh, man. Um... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Starts with the V. Five, Five four, three, two, two. one. No. Dan is out. Dan's out. V to you? V for Vendetta. Oh, of course. Yeah, VW for me? Yeah. Uh, what women want? Xanadu. You would. <laughs> uh, yes, man. Zoolander. Alpha Dog. What are, oh, are we, we got to Z. Are we twisting? Do we want to twist it? Let's twist it. Okay, so what do you want to do? Uh, do we want to do only the movies, or do we want to do numbers? Or we could do the same letter. Or same letter. Uh, let's... Numbers gives a definitive winner, because you can only get to a certain point and can't go anymore. But it is 22. There is a movie for 22. It's called 22 Bullets. It is Jean, Jean Renault. Maybe it's 23. 23 then. is... Is there a 23? Number, number 23. No. So that's not... Yeah. I think it's probably 23. And 24 is the only number. Or the, it's the biggest 20, number. 24 is the highest number. The highest number. <laughs> so. Yeah. In math. Look it up. <laughs> I've ruined my own spot there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's go uh, Let's go with us, I guess. Because that'll... Well, I guess they all give us a determinate winner, right? Yeah. So, A to you with the something that starts with A. The Avengers. 
the big hit? The Crow. The Departed. The Elephant Man. I was thinking that. Um, the Fast and the Furious. The Godfather Part <laughs> 1. <laughs> You're welcome. The Hangover. The Ice Harvest. Ooh, I, we are on the same wavelength <laughs> of movies. Um, the Jackal. Ooh, well played. Now, I said Killers. Is there also a The Killers? There's The Killers. The, kill the Killers is... No, Killers is Ashton Kutcher? Yeah. I don't know if there's a The Killers. Uh, let's... Uh, in case there isn't, there's got to be, but... Uh, Maybe. I think there's The Killer. Is The Killer or something? I, thought, I, thought I know that there is The Killer Inside Me. Hmm. Well, let me do something else in case... Well, do we want to look up if there is Killers and The Killers? Because I may have lost... But let's have a look. Killers. Wow, it's really having a tough time there. It's because I was searching on oh. a cast. Uh, Ashton Kutcher is just Killers, and there, uh, there is a The Killers 1964, Lee Marvin and John Cassavetes. I don't know. Those are both big names. If that's what I was thinking of, but we'll... I think I'll give it to you. We'll say I, I was. <laughs> okay, so that's K for me. So me. J. Uh... Mm, no. L. L. You're going, Whatever. You're going the wrong way. <laughs> uh, the Lion King. The Man Who Knew Too Little with Bill Murray. Good stuff. Uh, the Natural. The Omen. The Prophecy. The Queen. Oh, that's a good one. Um... um the right stuff. That's all the right stuff. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Um, unlike NKOTB, Drew did not have the right stuff, baby. <laughs> Scott, you get to host the first game. I'll take it. I, I'm, I'm kind of not happy with that win, because I, I don't know about Because you killers. didn't know the killers. You just but, assumed it was something. But, but I was pretty sure it was. I mean, at least, but... I think I gave it to you because it had... Two, like, reasonably, those are, those, yeah, yeah. Those are big, reasonably big actors. It was a legit movie. Yeah, it wasn't like it was, like, yeah. a Polly Shore movie. Straight to video. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I guess that means I am hosting Leonard first. Can we watch uh, Jury Duty sometime? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> okay, so for you, do we decide who we're, what we were giving your final deal first? We, we did the alphabet. No, but for which one of us goes first? Oh, shit. Because uh, I was doing build title. Right, so, yeah. So I, see, I guess between build title and uh, kitten... Movie cats. Yeah, mo movie kitties. No, film kitties. <laughs> film kitties. I like film kitties. All right. Do you want, you want to do that one? I don't care. Yeah. Film kitties, fun with you? Sure. That's, All right. that's movie actor. So, movie. yeah, this is our first time playing this one. So it's uh, based on, and by, when I say based on, I mean stolen directly. Like everything from, else we do. Uh, another podcast, not Douglas Movies, uh, Never Not Funny, uh, known as... Movie Cats, spelled K-A-T-Z, because it, it was invented by Never Not Funny intern Dan Katz. And basically, it's it's a simple enough game. You uh, One person starts by naming a movie or an actor, and then the next person has to name... Say say the person starts with an actor. The next person has to name a movie that actor was in. Oh, the rundown! Damn it! What did they <laughs> think of that? Uh, too, always comes too late. Uh, so yeah, you basically just go back and forth, movie actor, movie actor. You name an actor, you name a movie that actor was in, and then you name another actor in that movie, then you name another movie that actor was in, and <laughs> so on. Once you don't know the answer, once you can't think of something, you challenge the person who last said it, and they have to basically back up their shit and say and you know, and give the answer. Then if they can, they get the point. If they don't, the other person gets the point. So I think, and if it's pretty simple, yeah. If everyone gets it now, great. If you don't, I think it'll become pretty clear as we play. Yeah. So um, it'll go pretty quick. So you like best two out of three? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Drew goes first because he smells better today. <laughs> I don't know about that. I probably one I'm laying around. Uh, probably, and, and probably and just, as you, just as you said that, a foul odor just <laughs> came upon us. I don't know if you smell that, but stench. Uh, so I just have to name any Anything. movie I want. Yeah, and it's it's basically an unspoken rule. You start with something easy. Uh, Ocean's Eleven. Great. George Clooney. I like how there's a question mark. <laughs> yeah, like, like, is George Clooney there's, in there? There's eight thousand actors in that. One of the main ones is George Clooney. Uh, 
The Men Who Stare at Goats. Oh, I saw that. Jeff Daniels. You think he's in everything. He was not that one, though, right? Probably. Uh, I haven't, I haven't seen it. it was not... Jeff Daniels. Uh-oh. He's thinking of Jeff Bridges. I am thinking of Jeff Bridges. Oh, oh mercy. I lose. That was okay. a quick one. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. One, one nothing me. One nothing to Dan start. Dan can start. Okay. Uh, we will go with uh, The Dark Knight Rises. Sure. Uh, I know what you're going to say. Gordon, I, that's like, exactly what you were going to hey, say. Hey, me and Kelly got a boner for him. Yep. 50-50. Seth Rogen. Uh, knocked up. Catherine Heigl. Every shitty romantic comedy. What's her... Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> What's that one where she uh, yeah, I is know a exactly. bridesmaid? Yep, yeah, um, I know exactly where you're going. Oh, fuck. But what is the title? Oh, shit. What is it? Uh, it's like... If you don't know... If you can't think of one, you can challenge, but Drew's going to be all over it, so you better think of something. 27 Dresses? Yes. Damn it. Correct. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, Dan. Who else did the twenty-seven dresses? Oh, <laughs> if I oh, no, hold on. <laughs> I know who I wanted to say, but I don't think he's in that one. I think he's in the, another one. I should have thought of another Heigl thing, but I can't. Oh, oh I call no. another Heigl one that uh, I know someone else is in it. Josh Jamal. That, that Here's, was, okay. That was that other one. Yes. Can I see? Because there are twenty-seven I'm, dresses. Can you name anyone else is in twenty-seven dresses? Ah, uh, that's not what I named. You know one other per- well. There's there's a couple. Names, I know one other person. Names, but there's one person. You've been watching on TV lately. Hey, really... let's not give hey, peace away. Hey, no get it. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming that one person is... Uh, oh, that's not what I was thinking. She's done a lot of stuff. She is. Oh, oh, oh we get away there to one. She's kind of hot. Yeah. I would... I'm going to say Portia de Rossi. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Judy Greer. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, two nothing Drew on that one. You are ready. Right. You are like so. Two. Drew <laughs> gets <laughs> Drew gets the distinct <laughs> honor. Oh no! Right, here's, right, here's the thing. Dan's got something to say. I feel like I'm at a, a, dis- a bit of a disadvantage because of my uh, knowledge specific of, of <laughs> indie films. My, yeah, my knowledge of, of films that involve staring and <laughs> subtitles and real life subjects <laughs> and uh, the lack of color. <laughs> and <laughs> so. But uh, this may work into my advantage, and when I say my advantage, my, my entertainment, when I host the Leonard Malton game. Oh, no. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that goes. Not for the, my current set of uh, topics, subjects for today, but for future games, I do have a movie that was made in 1915. So, oh my god. Much, much like Liam Neeson and Taken, Dan has a very specific set of skills. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get to it. Drew, you're picking first. After all that work, that's what this comes to. You get to pick yes, the ma'am. category first. Yes, ma'am. High stakes. What are we talking about? I know about which here? one I'm not taking. What are you not taking? I'm not going to tell you because then you're going to pick it. I might not give it to you. Okay. Let's go with uh, Best Picture Losers. Hey, that was the one I was not going to go with. <laughs> all right. Uh, Adrenaline Rush, Adrenaline Rush, the movies of Jeffrey Rush, and in theaters, Meow, movies featuring a cat. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to go with Adrenaline Rush. Adrenaline Rush. Your options are 1996, 2000, and 2007. I, I got one I want you to pick. (laughs) <laughs> Let's go 2,000. 2,000. 2,000 is two and a half stars, seven actors listed. Let's have a look at what we're dealing with here. Leonard says, uh, that's all plot, handsome, witty, and ribald, then it turns grim and nasty, leaving a bad taste behind. Uh, it's adapted from a play. Uh, anything else I can say? Not really. That's just plot. So, yeah, seven actors, two and a half stars, year 2000. Jeffrey Rush is in it. How many can you name it in, Drew? How many was it against? Seven. Seven. Minus two. Kids got balls. Drew, you're going minus three, I'm not going minus which you're not getting in a million years. I'm Actually, not, although all three are big names. I'm, just, I'm not saying name it. What do you say, Dan? He's got to get it in the right order. Okay. Movie first? 
Movie first, then first build, then second build. I will tell you if you're correct or not when you've said all of those things. I just forgot who number two is. So <laughs> who does over. number two work for? Okay, I'm gonna say Quills. I'm gonna say Jeffrey Rush. And then what is her name? It is Morgan Fairchild. Oh no no no! I know you. Uh, Maggie Fuck. Kate. Kate Winslet. Well. Much like Kate Winslet's heart will go on, so will Dan in this competition as he just made up for a poor showing in movie cast <laughs> by nailing quills in minus two and automatically entering himself in the in Doug Benson's tournament of champions. <laughs> tournament of championships, I'm sorry. I'd like to say that I watched that movie on D V D with my born again Christian father, and when Weird. things got a little hot and heavy in the back half of that movie very awkward. <laughs> Things to watch with your born again Christian father. Movies about the Marquis de Sade. <laughs> Great. Good movie, hey, though. Very good movie. Good movie. I, I did like the movie. I, I might have ever seen it. I think I have, and I think I would give it three as opposed to two and a half. Yeah. So, point to Dan, so Drew picks again. I got spanked. You really did. Like, My I, I'm, hurts. I'm amazed you're still showing your face. My bottom hurts. <laughs> it hurts. All right. Three entirely new categories. In, entirely different from the last three. Yeah. Not new, because gotcha. we got enough. Uh, Razzie winners for Worst Picture of the Year. Squeal Like a Pig, the films of Ned Beatty. <laughs> and I'm Cohen Insane, the films of the Cohen I gotta brothers. go Cohen Brothers. I killed it. I killed Chewie at that one last time. You ruined his life with A Serious Man. A Serious Man <laughs> is a great film. See it. And I believe, yeah, I think we said Leonard's lowest rated Cohen movie. Yeah. Which, which they, like should all, said, they should all be for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I guess it, it is one of their not best ones, but it's still great. Yeah. So, I think two, he gave it two stars, way too low. Where it's like a dick. All right, so what are we going to give you? Let's go, uh, let's go 1991, 2000, 1987. Uh, let's go... 87. I like the way you think. Three and one-half stars. Nine actors in it. Let's look it up. <laughs> Almost spilled everything on my iPad, which is actually owned by my work and would have cost me $600. <laughs> so, here we go. Boom. 87, three and a half stars, nine actors. Leonard says, a formidably flaky comedy about an odd couple. Uh, look out for those chase scenes. <laughs> uh, aggressively whacked out sense of humor may not be for all tastes, but if you're not a total shithead, it is. I added that second part. Uh, but it's a heady mix of irony and slapstick. That should be enough for you. So, bidding starts at nine. Nine. Nine, he says. Seven. Seven. Six. Six. Name it. Uh, I was hoping I could get seven. Get all but three? That's decent. There, There's some folks in it. We're going to start off with M. Emmett Walsh. I know you're a fan of the first initial actors. Yes, M. Emmett. Randall Tex Cobb. <coughs> Frances McDormand, because you can't make a Coen Brothers movie without her. Of course not. Sam McMurray. William Forsythe. And another Coen favorite, John Goodman. I was going to say, is Goodman in this movie? Yes, he is. <sighs> Formidably flaky comedy about an odd couple. Aggressively whacked out sense of humor may not be for all taste, but it's a heady mix of irony and slapstick. Look out for those chase scenes. It's not what I think it is, but or it's not what I'm. It's not what I'm going to guess, but I totally spaced on what it was. And keep in mind, I read six, so the top three have not been listed for you. Oh yeah, you know what? The one I'm thinking of, she would have definitely been dull tired than that. Hmm. I'm give me, I'm gonna say give me something. Raising Arizona. And despite your lack of confidence, you are one hundred percent correct. I would have thought the Francis McDormand would have been No, I guess she's not the She's not she's not the wife. Yeah, Holly Hunter's the wife. That's right. Yeah. 
Nick Cage, Holly Hunter. Trey Wilson being the last person I didn't list. Oh, yeah. That puts it at one a piece. Is he now playing the three, I'm assuming? Yes. Yeah. This isn't, this isn't the last time it was a sweep, and we're like, okay, we'll put it. Ah, let's go to four. Yeah. We'll give him a chance to come back, and then so, I did. <laughs> Dan gets the pick. Let's give Dan stuff Dan will like. Number one, Mr. Anderson. The movies of Wes and or Paul Thomas Anderson. Let's give him a Twa Kulu, the movies that contain red, white, or blue in the title. Also known are, as? Are also known as America. America. Are they the three films from the Twa Kulu era? No, because none of them contain red, white, or blue in them. They are rouge, blanc, and bleu. <laughs> Although you did it in the opposite order. Yes. Don't tell me how to run my business. <laughs> well, you're thinking America. Uh, you're thinking not thinking America. France. <laughs> I am not. So, those two, and movies I love. Which helps you and not me, because I don't know all the movies he loves. I have, true. Dan, I have known Dan, him longer. Dan than and I do sit down once a week and go over movies that I love. Let's go with uh, Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Let's go with... I'll give you a choice of four, because I am a sporting gentleman. 1996... 2002, 2007, or 2007B? 96. 96. Two and a half stars, eight actors. Check it out. See what Len has to say about this ruckus by either Paul Thomas or Wes Anderson. P.T. or Wesley. P.T. or Wesley. Uh, original low-key comedy. Uh, engaging performances by the lead and second lead. Uh, expanded from a 13-minute short subject film. And two and a half stars and uh, eight actors. So bidding starts at eight. Dan, I'm guessing you're not going to say eight. Minus two. Minus two, he says. Can you go three? I, I think I know what it is, but can I go negative three? Just clarify. Tell me the year again. 1996. Okay, okay. Uh, I feel like either way I'm giving this to Dan, because I don't think I can do three. I can't. I can't think of who the third person would be. Well, because I just. I think I've just forgotten it, but <laughs> completely. All right, Dan, name it. Bottle Rocket, Owen Wilson, Luke Wilson. If you were to say a third, what would you say? No fucking idea what his name is. If you were to say fourth, what would you say? Fourth is easy. I can't remember. Wes Anderson. No. Keep keep on the track you were going. Andrew Wilson? Oh, is it? Yes. Yeah, Andrew Wilson, that's right. <laughs> Number three is Robert Musgrave. Uh, no one here. No. I'm kidding. I don't know who that is. And then the woman, is she the the the, the maid? Uh, Lumi Cavazos, then James Caan, Teddy Wilson, and Jim Pons. Teddy Wilson, any relation? What? Teddy, Teddy, Teddy Wilson. Any, any relation? To what? To other Wilsons. Oh. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. He is another Wilson. Yeah, <laughs> I figured it was not. I mean, when he ninety six, I knew that movie came out in nineteen ninety six. Yeah, but also the thirteen minute short, I knew for a fact that that's what you were talking about. So, yeah, that yeah. that was totally bullshit. Now, now give me the blomity category. I don't have Black comedies. I don't have and never will have. I want Soul Plane. A blomity category. I want other black comedy movies. I can only think of Soul Plane. Big Mama's Lo House. Lottery ticket two. <laughs> Big Mama year. What? Big Mama year. <laughs> what about the fine uh, VHS find that I picked up in a Walmart dollar bin uh, that I left in Justin Notkey's parents' basement in Bellevue, Ohio, Black known Rage. as Black Rage, <laughs> which had maybe the best cover ever of this big, juiced-up black guy holding a sickle to his <laughs> white slave master's throat. Yeah, it's a pretty amazing cover. <laughs> never, I'm not going to lie. Unfortunately, never watched it. 
Uh, nope. I never watched it, and I brought it to Ohio to watch it with the notorious racist that the not keys are, and never, and left it there. Left and it there, and it. never, and now, and now, just, yeah, never got it back. Hopefully so. the not keys got some mileage out of it. I hope someone watched it. Alright. So, Drew, because Mr. Anderson almost exclusively catered to Dan... All I know is movies. I just couldn't think of a third person in Bottle Rock. I'll give you a choice of five categories to hopefully something you can (laughs) deal with. Uh, Beatlemania, movies with John Paul, George, or Ringo in the title. Nope, not saying anything more about that. I was hoping you'd say it. Uh, Four-letter movies. Uh, Bet you can't name the whole title. Ooh, I do like that one. And, uh, how many is that? Is that three? That's three. Uh, we'll do, uh, Razzie Winners again. And Vanilla Ice. Movies with vanilla or ice in the title. I like, but you can't name the whole title. All right. I you <laughs> don't get to pick anything, because I only have one, one left in that category. It is from the year. And it's not Borat. It's not Borat, Cultural Learnings of America for Make Benefit, Glorious, Glorious Nation of, of Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. It is in the year 2010. It garnered two stars and has 12 actors in it. Now, did you use one of those in the last episode that I haven't heard yet? Because there's one that yes. I was hoping yes. would be... Was it from yes. 1964? No. Okay. That's a, that's a good... Yeah, I don't know. I, does I everyone think, know that, I though? feel like most people can name it, even though it's long. Because it's yeah. not just long. It's normally when there's a second part yes. that people don't know. Yeah. I, I guess I can... Well, I can spoil it. Because the only person I'm actually spoiling is Dan. and Because everyone else who was going to hear it has already heard it. It was... Uh, uh, if I told, if I said Russell Crowe on a ship, oh, okay. it's uh, Master and Commander Colin dicking around or uh, fighting around fighting the world, around. <laughs> <laughs> the far side of the world, and wow. nobody knows that. And the one they did on uh, Douglas movies that nobody fucking knows. Remember the space version of Jumanji, Zathura? I do remember that. It's not just Zathura. Dude, it's really Zathura, a space adventure. Yeah, <laughs> nobody knows that. And they, they got it wrong on... on uh, My on guess would have been... S- Zathura, Space Jumanji? <laughs> <laughs> Question mark? So 1964, right? That's what, that's what we're... It's not 1964. It is not Dr. Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. So there. Is that what it's called? Yeah. No. Yeah, that one could have got Drew. I've also, I've also there never seen it, so I could Oh die. my god, you own so many terrible movies. <laughs> okay, that I've never don't, seen Dr. Strange. Don't get on, <laughs> don't get on a Tristan rant here. He gave me shit that I'd never seen Goodfellas, but I'd seen Soul Plane. <laughs> and then I saw Goodfellas, and I didn't like it that much. And then you, ch- then on your blog. <laughs> if you want to plug it right now? Go ahead. No, that's okay. All right, don't I'll plug it later. I'll plug it later. All right, on, on your movie review blog, <laughs> you tried. And, and, but still couldn't bring yourself to give Lottery Ticket starring Lil Bow Wow a better rating than Goodfellas. <laughs> Just to piss off Tristan. Just to piss but off Tristan. But I couldn't because Lottery Ticket was that bad. <laughs> Yeah, I should have just done. I should have just done a hundred percent just to see how mad he would have gotten me. <laughs> Moving on, Tristan, if you're listening to this, go fuck yourself. <laughs> He's not. All right, what are we dealing with here? Okay, bet you can't name the whole title. 2010, two stars, twelve actors. Uh, that's a whole lot of plot. Uh. I don't think I want to tell you that. Impressive looking. Uh. Stuffs a lot of story and warfare into its narrative, but everything feels secondhand and contrived, including the sparse comedy relief. It's also pretty bleak for a so-called family film, based on a series of novels for kids. Bidding starts at 12, Drew. 12? 12? 10? Alright. 9? 8? 7. Name it. Seven. Is this Dan for the win if you don't name it? Dan for the win. Alright. Only my second loss. I lost Ooh. Kelly once. He's coming on strong in his debut. But you can tie it up right here. If I win, do I get to host the next game? Yeah, that works. Yeah. When yes. host? Yeah. yeah. Good, because I I'm gonna host it. I'm gonna host the shit out of this. Shit out of this. All right. Uh, do you need any information again, or do you just want your? Uh, how, so how many stars? Two stars. Two stars. Okay. Two thousand ten. Yeah. Okay. And you're getting seven or six. Seven. All right. Uh, Miriam Margolis. 
Is it Margolis? M A R G O L Y E S? Sure. Margolis. I think Margolis. 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 Um, Richard Roxburgh. David Wenham. Anthony LaPaglia. Ryan Quanton. Sam Neill. And Abby Cornish. That is seven. Sam Neill. did not get the top five. What the fuck was Sam Neill doing in 2020? I'll give you the clues again. Impressive looking. No, no, no I, I got you. It's a, fa- it's a family. It's a story and warfare into its narrative. Everything feels second and contrived. Uh, also pretty bleak for a so-called family film based on a series of novels for kids. Oh, God damn it. The only movie I can think of that Sam Neill has done in the last 15 years that wasn't Event Horizon <laughs> <laughs> was not, is not this movie. Sam Neill. I'm, I'm sure I've seen it, too. You have. I shouldn't be close, but you have. Doesn't matter. I'm sure I've probably seen it. And you know what? And here's the thing. Even if you get it, I bet you can't name the whole title (laughs) because that's the category. Oh, yes. God damn it. I'm going to hear it and I'm going to be super furious. You might. All I can think of is Daybreakers, but that's not the movie. But that was the only thing I could think of that Sam Neill was in. I don't believe Daybreakers was based on a series of novels for kids. Four kids, kids. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Fucking based on novels for kids. I I don't want to kill a bunch of time here. I, I'm fucking dead in the water. Nothing? I'm sure I'll hear it and I'll throw my pen at you. I'll give you the rest of the names. You guys still might not get it. Uh, Emily Barclay. Hugo Weaving, who, in fact, is one who said... Mr. Anderson. Uh, Jim Sturgis, Jeffrey Rush, so this could have been in his category too, and Helen Mirren. But you guys still can't get it. I know all those names. I know. No idea. I don't know Jim Sturgis. Who's Across the Universe, okay. uh, 21, huh. 50 Dead Men Walking. Apparently you know Jim Sturgis. Yeah, he's, he's, all too well. He's a young British man who does yeah. things. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, did we figure that it is animated CGI? Mm-hmm. We did. And right. we still don't know. Uh-huh. If I told you the first two words of the review, could you get it? An owlet. <laughs> oh, God damn it. The and now that I know, can you say it? Epic owl movie. <laughs> That's, uh, that's all we ever called it, was owl, the epic owl, owl movie. Owl of the Rings. The, uh, <laughs> the owl of the Rings. Legends, Legend of the Guardians, the... No. It's Legend of the Guardians. It's Legend it's of the Guardians, colon. Something Gahul. The Owls of Gahul. The Owls of Gahul. Yeah. Fuck, yeah. yeah I definitely one. saw it, and I definitely liked it. Direct. But I did say too epic for an owl movie. Pretty epic for an owl movie. Mm-hmm. I saw a trailer for it in 3D. That was the, <laughs> <laughs> the extent uh, of... Yes, I also saw a trailer for it in 3D. And that, that's why I saw the movie, because it looked great. It was, yeah, it was okay. It was, uh, it was basically another Zack Snyder disappointment. <laughs> All right. So... So that's a win for Dan. Dan is one and O oh in the history of televised audio audio televised. Well, that makes up for audio. Justin being O oh and five. <laughs> I, I guess. I guess I'm that gonna, I'm gonna, makes up for until it. he wins something. I'm just going to keep referring to him as O oh and five. Maybe he'll get the Johnny Testarossa run of O oh and nineteen. That's a good run. Can I get a pen from someone? Cool. All right. <laughs> Thus concludes part one of I Sex Thick's Heart Cinema episode five. That was quite the cliffhanger we left you on. Please join us very soon for episode 5.5, The Thrilling Conclusion.